If you think your timer is giving you the problem and your machine not filling and you want to know for sure, you're just going to need a couple of items. You're going to need your wiring diagram, you're going to need your multimeter set on continuity, and you're going to need to remove the power from the machine. Most important, unplug it, turn off your breaker, pull your fuses, whatever you have to do to make sure you're keeping safe. Having done that, you're going to want to just sit down with your schematic for a few minutes and take a look at it. You want to check your legend, find out on your legend what they're using to show contacts within your timer. In this case, it looks like a, a dark bold wire that's in a, a bit of a ramp or a drawbridge style. Uh, we have a straight black line in bold, that's an internal connection within the timer. And we have just a regular straight line that's not bold, that's just a wire in your wiring harness. So what we want to know today is what's taking place in that timer to get power from your cord to your valves. So you're going to take your timer, you're going to rotate the dial, set it for a regular, regular cycle at the beginning of the cycle where it would normally be filling, set it there, pull the knob in or out, whichever way turns your machine on, typically they pull out. So once you have that set and you have your multimeter handy, you're going to take a look at your schematic and you're going to just look to see what's taking place with the power. It's going to come in in the black wire of your cord set. It's going to feed on a black wire coming into your timer. Once it's in your timer, if your washer happens to have a pilot light, it's going to run a circuit here with its own set of contacts for the pilot light. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. We have a thin black line right here which is telling us that there is an external jumper, an external black wire that's going to come out of the timer and loop right back around and come back into the timer. Again, it's still black. And what it's going to do is come through this set of contacts. This is one of our important ones. It's going to come through that number 10. It's going to feed straight through. It's going to branch off inside, but we don't care because that's not part of our fill cycle. It's going to come through your timer on internal and it's going to exit the timer on a violet wire. That violet wire is going to run through your pressure switch and it's going to come back to the timer. It's going to come back to the timer coming in as a pink wire. Inside the timer, that pink is going to go through an internal connection. It's going to go through another set of contacts right here, number 11 and it's going to come out as a brown wire going over to your selector switch or in this case it's an automatic temperature switch which then feeds your hot valve and your cold valve on the other side of your valves it's a white wire which is going to work its way all the way back up through the harness and come back to your cord on your neutral so that's the circuit we're dealing with these are the contacts we're looking to cover today 10 and 11 so you're going to take your multimeter, you're going to set it on continuity, see if you've got that beep, or if the needle swings over, letting you know that you have a completed circuit. Now again, power is turned off in your machine, you're going to want to find that black wire where it goes into the block to your timer, and you're going to take one of your leads, and you're going to put it right there on that black wire. You're going to find that violet wire as well in that block going on to your timer, put your other lead there. So with your timer set up in a fill situation and the knob pulled out for in, whichever turns it on, you should be hearing your multimeter giving you a squealing sound or at least seeing the needle swing over whichever way you have it set for. If it is doing that, that contact is good and if you're still having a problem with that fill, then you need to look at the other contact. So you're going to take your leads Find the pink wire in the block, put one there. Find the brown wire in the block, put the other lead there. You should be having continuity. If that contact is closed and it's in good condition, your meter should be giving you a squealing sound or at least the needle swinging over, letting you know that uh, you have continuity. If both of these switches test good, the problem you're having with your machine not filling is not the timer. If either one of those is not closed, either the contacts are worn, burnt out, or the cam that actually physically operates those contacts is worn out and the timer needs to be replaced. 
Hope you found this helpful. It's that easy. Just have a good meter, have your wiring diagram, and take the time to learn your diagram so you know what's supposed to be happening. Do your troubleshooting, and you'll be good to go. Thank you.